Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to section 1.5 entitled Uncertainty in Measurement. Now, in section 1.4, we went over the physical property of density, and we did some measurements in the laboratory and in the classroom dealing with density. So when making measurements of anything in a science classroom, we have to remember that we're dealing with numbers. And when we're dealing with numbers, one section 1.5 is going to highlight that there are two types of numbers encountered in scientific work. One type are exact numbers. Exact numbers are those values whose, well, those numbers whose values are known exactly. For example, we know that, we know that there are 12 objects in a dozen. We know that there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. That is definite, that is known, it is exact. The other type of numbers we'll encounter are inexact numbers. And these are numbers whose values are uncertain. These numbers have some uncertainty. These are the ones that we handled in the laboratory. <clears throat> they have uncertainty because they're obtained by measurement. And measurements are always inexact. They're inexact because the equipment that we use to measure these quantities has its limitations. And we, the people measuring this, the scientists, make human errors. So, since all measure quantities are in exact numbers, there is always some uncertainty in the last digit reported for any measured quantity. First and foremost, there's always uncertainty in all measured quantities. Where is that uncertainty? That uncertainty is in the last digit. For example, let's say we're going to take the mass of a hairston, me. Now look at my scale here. If I were to step on the scale here, it would read 160.1.2, uh, actually, sorry, that's wrong. It would be 161, 162, 163, 164. This red dial here is where the reading is for my weight. So I'd be 164, and this red needle here is right somewhere in the middle. It's uncertain. I have to take a guess at that last digit. So I know it's 164 because it's, it's clear. 160, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have to guess on that last digit. So my guess is going to be a 5 because it looks kind of like it's in the middle somewhere. Am I certain? No, but it looks like it might be. So I take a guess. That's why there's uncertainty in measured quantities because we have to guess on that last digit to try to be as precise as we can possibly be. Because to say I'm simply 164 pounds is not accurate. Clearly, it's in between the four and the five of this 160 category. So I have to approximate that I'm 164.5 pounds. That last digit, that five there, is uncertain. And when we account for that uncertainty, the value is expressed as 164.5 plus or minus 0.1, or 0 0.1 pounds. That means that this number could possibly be 0.1 pounds higher or 0.1 pounds lower, somewhere in between, because it's, just a, it's an approximate value. So we could read it as plus 0.1, which would make this number 164.6 pounds, or we can read it minus 0.1, which would make it 164.4 pounds. That's what this number means. This is just some degree of uncertainty that we have. It's either plus 0.1 or minus 0.1. That's because we approximated to the 10th place. If I approximated out to the 100th place, if I had you know, more lines there on my scale that I could actually make a more precise um, measurement, then it would be to the, if I could measure out to this place here, then it would be plus or minus 0 0.01 pounds. And I would approximate that value being plus or minus to the hundredth place. Now, all digits of measured quantities, including the uncertain, the uncertain one, that last digit, are called significant figures. We abbreviate significant figures as sig figs. Again, all digits of a measured quantity, including the one that's uncertain, the one that you've guessed, are called significant 
figures. Now, here's an example. If I have a measured quantity of 2.2 grams, this would have two significant figures. If I had a measured quantity of 164.53 pounds, this would have five significant figures. Right now, it looks like we're just counting the digits and then saying, well, that's how many significant figures we have. For now, we'll say that, just for now. Next, the next board, we won't say that anymore. Now, here's a special note. The greater the number of significant figures, the greater the certainty implied for the measurement is. So the more significant figures we have, the greater the certainty. So we're certain out until that last value that that's the number, that that's the uh, precision of the number. That's the accuracy of that number. So the greater number of significant figures, the greater the certainty or the precision we could even think of it. Now, determining the number of significant figures isn't always this simple. There are some rules that govern how we do that. So let's take a look at these rules. So rules to determine the correct number of significant figures in a measurement. Rule number one, all non-zero digits are significant. So anything that's not a zero is a significant figure. Two, zeros between non-zero digits are always significant. For example, I have 1,005 here. I have two zeros between two non-zero digits, making these zeros significant. So I have one, two, three, four significant figures. Notice I have my units here because I never just have a naked number. That number always comes with units here in science class. Number three, zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. They simply indicate the position of the decimal point. They're like placeholders. For example, I have 0.0045 centimeters. I only have two significant figures here, the four and the five. These zeros that start off my number are not significant because they're simply placeholders. They're telling me that I have a really small number, yet they do not indicate the precision of this value. Rule number four. Zeros at the end of a number are significant if, it's conditional, the number contains a decimal point. For example here, I have 0 0.004500 centimeters. These two zeros at the end of my number are significant because they come after a decimal point, which is here. If you can't see it on the video, that decimal point there. It's the same number, same values up here. I just have two more zeros indicating that it's precise out to this place there. So I have one, two, three, four significant figures. Let's look at this example. 600. And stick with it. 600 meters. There's one significant figure here. Because these two zeros, even though they come after a uh, non-zero digit, they don't come after a decimal place, or decimal point, excuse me. There's no decimal point before these, thus these are not significant, so I only have one significant figure. Rule number five, kind of going along with this here, zeros at the end of a number are usually assumed to not be significant if there is no decimal point, as I said up here. Zeros at the end are not assumed to be significant when there's no decimal point present. For example, 600, as we said, has one significant figure, no decimal point present at the beginning, thus it, it, those zeros are not significant. Now, when this happens, oftentimes scientific notation is used to specify which digits are significant. For example, if I have 5.00 times 10 to the second meters, I have three significant figures here. One, two, three. These zeros come after a decimal point, so I would call them significant. And if just for your mental uh, frame of reference, this is, you know, 500. Five times 10 to the second meters. Now, say I had 5.0 
times 10 to the second meters. Here I have one, two significant figures. But this number is still the same as this number in its value, meaning it's 500 meters. I'm just expressing it in a different way. Here, third example, I have 5 times 10 to the second meters. I have one significant figure here because this is my only non-zero digit. The number is still 500 meters, but I've expressed it differently because it only has one significant figure. Significant fig figures tell you how precise your measurement is, meaning how precise the instrument you used to measure is. So we'll talk more about this in class. Please take notes, gentlemen. This is something that we'll be using all year long. Significant figures, get used to them, get comfortable with them. Adios.